Welcome to my kitchen. It is time to cook. Now, I have got two cracking recipes for you. Cannot wait to share them. Emily's hungry. She wants these cooking as quickly as possible. Yeah. So, here goes. We're going to make the most beautiful fruitcake today, but not as you know it. You know, I'm from Yorkshire originally, so uh, a Yorkshire tea bread would be what I had. And this recipe is taken from my wife's granny, who made an amazing Yorkshire tea bread. But I've, I've, I've had a fiddle around with it, as I do. Um, and I have replaced the dried fruit with dates and roasted hazelnuts. And I'm going to soak it in a beautiful coffee from my friend around the corner at Dark House Roast beautiful wild camp espresso and it all it kind of takes it from Yorkshire tea bread and blends it with sticky toffee pudding baked with these crunchy hazelnuts and then buttered with a coffee it's amazing and the ongoing argument between me and Emily mm. is buttered or not buttered no, I'm totally in the butter it. camp no, from Yorkshire we butter everything no. um, and then I've got an amazing recipe that me and a good friend of mine John Fell created a few years ago now I've been out on the fells today. I've been with Pip the dog. Um, we've been blackberrying. It's that time of year. It's September. All of a sudden, it feels a little autumnal, doesn't it? Yeah. There's dew on the ground. It's not always that warm. Um, we've had rain today, um, but the blackberries are out, which for me is a good time. So we've been out blackberrying. The dog's fast asleep in the corner on the beanbag. And I'm going to make blackberry apple with Cumberland sausage tray bake. Yeah. So it's sweet, it's sticky, and it's porky sausages. I live in the Lake District, so of course it's Cumberland sausage, but you could use whatever sausages you choose, but it will be delicious. So let's get cracking. Now, I'm gonna get the cake in first. So I have got 250 grams of softened butter. Now, when you're baking, it's really important that your temperatures are right, okay? Bake Off is just around the corner. So you're gonna be listening a lot of this soon. It's all about how to make the perfect bake. Now, room temperature eggs, room temperature butter, really important. So I've got two types of sugar here. I've got brown and I've got caster sugar because I want that sort of deep, dark flavor that's gonna go in there, okay? So I'm just gonna blend them all together and whack them in. And the idea is to mix these two together to get the texture right to incorporate all the rest of the ingredients. But just before I do that, I have got my dates here, okay? So I've chopped them all. I've got my espresso, and we're gonna pour that over the dates, and it'll kind of soften them, um, and it will make them sort of almost dissolve and disappear, almost, not quite. Have you had this before? I used to make this in my cafe all the time and in fact it's one of the first recipes that I wrote on my first cookbook, uh, Simply Good Taste, because we used to serve it in the cafe all the time. And you just let them soak for a little while. It's because I have a problem with tea. Yeah, I just... it's a tea barrel crisp, isn't it? Well, a Welsh well, version, but you have well. Borrowdale tea bread up here, which is, mm. you know, uh, is the sort of spiced fruit cake. And you also have a Penrith pepper pot. No, oh. Penrith pepper cake, I think it is. Oh. And they do like a fruit cake with cracked black pepper in. It's really nice. Right, while the dates are soaking in, they don't take too long, 10 minutes or so, let's use the back of a silicon spoon and just start to press the sugar into the butter. All right, and you hear, can you hear that scratching? Yeah, that's what you don't want to hear and it's not ready until the sugar is fully dissolved into the butter, okay? Is this something you could do in a mixer? Yeah, totally. If you didn't have any equipment or... Yep, I, I mean to be honest I would normally do it in a mixer but it's obviously really loud for when we're, we're um, cooking in front for you guys. But if you do it in a mixer it will really incorporate and get really light and fluffy and as long as you can hit the scratching sound like that, as long as that's gone, I mean, that's kind of the rule for all basic cake making. It's about incorporating the fat and the sugar together to get one texture to get the eggs in and then get the flour in and everything else. So we'll just give it a really good mix. Now, all the recipes are available at masterclass.co. Now, if you scan the code, there's a QR code in the corner. 
If you're watching on a tablet, get your phone out, pause the screen, scan that code with your camera app, and it will take you straight to the recipe page on the website. If you're watching on your phone, obviously you, need to, you can't do that, but just go to masterclass.co and all our recipes are located there in the recipe section so you can find them. We're also, we broadcast on YouTube as well and Instagram. So currently if you're watching on Facebook, you can catch up on other platforms as well. We've got Instagram TV, you name it. So, right. So can you see that, Emily? Yeah. It's got yeah, nice so it's got that nice golden color, but it's also a little paler as well at the same time. So now we will add our eggs, but one at a time, okay? So one egg in, room temperature, because eggs are, have a far better elasticity when they're at room temperature than when they're fridge cold. Do you, do you keep your eggs in the fridge? No. No, no we don't. Oh, we don't. My, my grandma does, but we don't. Right. I just didn't know whether they work good. better for baking if they're at room temperature because they're far more elastic. And often eggs, that's what you're putting eggs in for, yeah. to kind of hold the elasticity of things in. Getting all scientific on you yeah. now, you see? Yeah, hurt my head. It's amazing what I learn. Okay, another egg in. Does it matter what happens if like, the eggs are too small or too... Is there well, a all eggs are different, to be honest, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, slightly different size. I generally use large eggs, um, but... You have to be aware of it, I think. Yeah. But if the mixture seems really loose, just add that tiny little bit more flour, maybe a tablespoon of flour just to allow for it. But you don't want to be changing the dynamics of the recipe too much. I mean, this, this cake's pretty, pretty forgiving, I think is probably the right term, because yeah. it's packed full of fruit and hazelnuts. So you don't see a hum huge amount of, of the bake. Yeah. It's all kind of full. Fruit cakes are like that, really. It's like it's mostly fruit, isn't it? And then yeah. you know the cake. The sponge just kind of holds it all. Together. Yeah. Whereas with a Victoria sponge, there's nowhere to hide. It's just a sponge. Yeah. So right. A little bit of coffee. Right now, if you've got any questions as well, please do post them in the comments below. I will answer you as soon as I can. I'm usually there to answer them straight away and please do share our program with your friends and family because we really want to grow this format and continue on through the course of the year we've got some amazing ideas to come uh, can't wait to share those with you we'll have some guests coming on i'm sure um, and we've got some brilliant recipes coming up so we've got our butter sugar eggs in there right okay so we are going to add in our flour so this is self-raising flour 400 grams, I think, but check the recipe because I am only a bloke and my memory is not that good. Okay, so I've got roasted hazelnuts. Yeah. I really like roasting mine because once, what I do is I put them in the oven and then if they've got the skins on, put them in a tea towel, rub them and all the skins will come off and then you get them nice and roasted because then they're crunchy and delicious. There we go. And then I've got my dates. And you can see there's not a huge amount of liquid left in there. So what we're going to do is just whack the lot in. And start to mix this together. And to be honest, we're nearly done. It's a really simple cake. Fruit ca People think fruit cakes are quite complicated, but yeah. they're really not. I mean, it's just bring all this together now. I We've just... It's a nice cake as well for it to last a little bit longer yeah this will get better this cake and it will you know make more than you need because it is delicious and you will you'll want more and i think it's one of those ones it'll freeze perfectly i'm just going to add a splash of milk in there Does just this, to loosen it out could, could this replace the christmas cake oh yeah i don't really like christmas cake like it. it's but all the Coffee and roast didn't see that kind of appeals mm. to me. See, you could add you could add figs into there. Candles. You could add a little, yeah. You can kind of play with it. Oh, I'm doing this Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so there is our cake. So it is that simple. It's that quick. Now I've got Masterclass uh, Smart Ceramic Loaf Tin. Don't need to line it because it's ceramic coated and it will just go straight in, which is brilliant. Get back towards me a little bit. Please. Yeah. There. Yeah. Is that all right? Okay. And this mixture will do two of these, which is brill. 
because it means we can pop one in the freezer. There we go. So you want it just about, what, a couple of centimetres from the top of your loaf tin. And that's going to go straight into the oven. It's going to take about an hour to bake. So it's quite a long, slow bake because there's moisture in there. Um, and then you really have to leave this for two or three hours to cool down. Um, and personally, I'd wrap it up and have it tomorrow. It's, it's better to be left overnight if you can. But let's get that in the oven. Right, time for my Cumberland sausage and blackberry and apple dish. So we start off obviously with good Cumberland sausages, okay? So you can get them all over now. You don't just have to get them in Cumbria, but everyone has their favorite. So in the Lake District, you know, in, in South Lakes, they prefer a different Cumberland sausage, you know, to what I find in West Cumbria is they like it really peppery. Um, so, Find your favorite. Mm. If you can't get Cumberland sausage, just get a really good pork sausage. Pork and apple would work really well. A traditional pork. So in with the sausages first of all. So the recipe says eight. If two sausages is enough for you, great. If not, put more in. What's your favorite? Sausage? Yeah. Oh, I like Cranston's. Ooh. Cranston's is a, is a butcher, a family butcher's. Um, They've also got farm shops and all sorts, but I do like their Cumberland sausage. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. I it is good. Some really nice Cumberland yeah. Sausage. I mean, we're blessed. Everyone, you know, has really good ones around here. I've got ones with black pudding in. They yeah, are. but they're not Cumberland, they're are not. they? The, the Cumberland sausage with black pudding. Are they? Oh, yeah. okay. The purist would have something to say about that. Right, while the sausages are browning off, let's look at our onions. Now, can you see these, Emily? Yeah. All three of my onions, I have kept the core on there. You know, that little root, because when you chop them in half, the onion stays together. And then when I chop them again and again, so I've cut them each half into four. And if my children were here, we would be having a fractions lesson. So they're cut into eighths. <laughs> Saves Emily's blushes, that. And you can see they're all staying together because we've kept that core on there. So in they go, in with the sausages. Great this because it's a one pot dish. I'm using one of the cast aluminium. I think it's, is it four liter, Emily, this one? The shallow one? one yeah. I think it's a four liter. Brilliant. It kind of acts like a big, heavy cast aluminium pan, but it's aluminium. So you can pick it up like that. Really easy. They're not as heavy, but they perform just as well, okay? And they can go straight into the oven, which is brilliant if you need it to, straight from hob to oven. Now, the dog has woken up because the sausage is cooking. <laughs> I thought she might. Right, so sausages in, okay? Now, I'm using some Granny Smith apples because I couldn't get Bramley's, which is what I, can't, it's what I wanted, really, but, you know, Sometimes you can't always have what you want, can you, Emily? Oh, I feel like I'm going to get this done in a one I feel like, do you remember when we did this last time and I got them all peeled in, all three in a one Because of this. <laughs> Shall we do it again? Yeah. Oh, I need to get rid of the core because that might jeopardize, oh, the stalk. Jesus. The stalk might Jesus. jeopardize my Jesus. triumph. Here we go, we're off. <gasps> so... A Y-shaped peeler. That's quite a satisfying thing to see, isn't it? I have to do it. I don't... Uh, whoa, that was close. <laughs> that was close. Hello, Pip. Pip's probably eaten more blackberries than we've picked, to be honest. I didn't realise dogs ate blackberries. No, this is not. the second dog I've had, and they've both eaten blackberries. And oh, they will really? pick them off the bush. Both of them. Oh yeah, hey? <laughs> right. <gasps> We're gonna have a threer. Oh, threer. <gasps> so satisfying. Right. Okay. So, sausages and onions cooking nicely. So we're gonna quarter our apples and just remove them now. 
I'm going to cut them into two pieces because I, I don't want the apples to just melt away to nothing. I want them to stay. I want chunks of apple. I wonder if the dog likes apple. Shall we see? Here we go. Yeah. Dog likes apple. Me? Hey, babe. Is that your little hoover? I know, I know. So if you have any questions as well, please do give me a shout. Um, and I will help you. And, and even if it's not about the recipe that we're doing today, you know, if you've got a killer question from the for the kitchen, just give me a shout. If I can help you, I'll help you. All right? So, quarters into eight. So everything into eight. There we go. There's a nice theme. Eight sausages. Cut your onions into eight and cut your apples into eight. Right, there we go. I'm going to crank the heat up now because I've added a little bit of moisture now with the apples going in there so we can afford to crank the temperature up a bit. All right, I'm going to put the lid on for a second, get the heat in there. Any questions for me today, Emily? What, what other, you, like you've used fruit in, in a savoury dish, mm. what, what other fruit could we start to Ooh, use? Oh, you could use it with dishes? plums. Mm. Peaches would be nice. You could do it with peach. Chunks of peach and nectarine and red onions. Pork works really well with fruit. So sort of any of those kind of fruits would work really nice. Obviously blackberries and apple, it's just a classic combo, isn't it really? So that's why I wanted to do it. And, up here in, the, in, in Cumbria, they have sausage and apple sauce quite often, which mm. made me think, ooh, that'd be nice. And Is that a thing up here? Yeah, did you not know? Have you I not had apple sauce no. with Cumberland sausage? I just thought it was a British thing. Do you think thing? it's normal? I thought, yeah. I thought it was a no. British thing. No, not everyone does that. Oh, right. Well, you, you learn something new every day. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, I, I didn't really come across apple and sausage. I mean, it, it works, pork and apple. I had apple sauce and a roast dinner. Um, but yeah, apple sauce with Cumberland sausage is nice. Yeah, it is. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Oh, it smells right. so good. It does, doesn't it? It's going to smell even better soon. Right, so I've got some chopped rosemary and I've got some thyme that are going to go in. All herbs that are still flourishing in the garden, doing really well. Nice, robust herbs. Thyme and rosemary work really well together. It's just pop. Now, I've got my blackberries. I'm not going to add those in yet. I've got a little bit of butter for a bit of nicety. A bit of nicety, a bit of niceness. Yeah. Makes it slightly rich. But to counter that richness, we've got red wine vinegar. And I think really good cooking is all about getting that balance right and getting those balance of flavors right. Because if it's too fruity, it, it'll become too sweet. Um, so if you don't add the vinegar, the balance isn't right. Um, so it's, it's very much getting that balance right. Now, I'm just going to season up. You can just see the nose of a dog. Hey? You can just see the nose of a dog. <laughs> what are you doing? Do you want to see? No. So a little sprinkle of salt in there, a little bit of black pepper, not too much, because we're using Cumberland sausage, which has got real peppery flavor in. Okay, so now our sausages, everything's going, everything's working. We're going to add our vinegar. Now, if you haven't got red wine vinegar, use a white distilled vinegar. That's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. If you've got loads of blackberries and you've been out picking, pickle blackberries in white distilled vinegar for four weeks and they're amazing. Blackberry vinegar all winter long. Pickled blackberries with cooked meats or cheeses with a bit of honey, amazing. Really, really good. So in with a little bit of sugar, not a lot. I think it's about 30 grams on the, uh, in the recipe. If you want the recipe, I will put a QR code along the bottom now. You can scan that with your phone or your iPad or whatever you use, and it will take you straight to masterclass.co, which is the website. Now, Masterclass we're sponsored by, and I work with those guys to create amazing recipes using their equipment, and that's kind of how it all works. Because a few of you have been asking you know, who Masterclass is, why, why, why are they working with you, and like that. I've been working them for about four, maybe three or four years now. Uh, and my entire kitchen, which is a symphony kitchen, and I absolutely love it, 
is full of masterclass and kitchen craft and lifetime brands equipment. Uh, and it's my job to test it, create amazing recipes and food with it. So there you go. Hello, dog. Can she smell? She sausages? can smell sausages. Right. So what I'm doing now is just reducing out the vinegar. So in with the blackberries, all right? Or black the, ice. Or now. <laughs> let's have a chat. Emily calls them blackites. I call them blackberries or brambles. You use a Cumberland sausage, you call them blackites. Anyone else heard of blackites? Black Put your comments below. <laughs> right, in with the butter. Come on, people, let me win this one. <laughs> Nobody's heard of blackites. Right, look at that. How amazing does that look? Oh, wow. Just. All those colours, all those flavours, it just... Autumnal, it? it does, it does. It is a recipe of the moment. Now, if you are watching this somewhere else in the world um, and you don't have blackberries, I know there are people in Australia who watch, people in America who watch, and for that, I thank you. It's amazing that we have a global audience. It just blows my mind. And I'm really grateful and thankful of it. If you don't have blackberries, look for... Um, frozen berries you could use raspberries if you wanted to um, you could use a little bit of blackberry and apple jam which i'm sure you can find you could use cranberries if you wanted to but they're very sharp so you might need to add a little bit more sugar and just get that balance right you could totally use blueberries they would work really well because they're nice and sweet and they would just work but it's very much about you getting the balance of flavors and acidity and sweetness right for you Okay, and the sausages that you might be using. So, let's just check this, have a little look, see what's going on. But can you see that, Emily? Can yeah. you see how the liquid is reducing down to a syrup rather than um, a sauce? Yeah. So everything's now starting to caramelize down. Right, my espresso and hazelnut fruit cake is ready and you can see it's ready by just pressing the top and if it springs back then the cake is baked but as i said before leave it to cool right down it really does need to firm back up after it's had its bake um, and i promise you it will be amazing the beauty of this is it makes two loaves so the other one is off screen, Emily's got her eye on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it'll make two loaves, which is perfect. So bang one in the freezer, slice it, and butter it. All right. Yes. Look at that. Can you oh, see Oh, look that? at the colour. I like how the apples have gone like that reddy colour because mm. of the blackberries. Looks good. That so, looks lovely, that. The idea now is just, can you see how yeah. it's just falling down to a syrup? And because we use these cast aluminium pans, they've got like these little nodules on the ends, these little dimples. So all the moisture drops back in and it helps it not reduce too quickly. Okay? But I'm just going to taste that oh. syrup to make sure it's all right. Oh, it smells so oh. good. Oh, do you know what? That's really good. <laughs> I sound surprised. That is really, really good. So if I bring that onto there, can we see that all right on that? We can. Right. Would you like me to give you a little taste? Y yeah, yeah, I do. I feel like you're up for a taste. So, we've got Cumberland sausage. We've got onions. We've got apple in there. We've got beautiful wild blackberries from the fells of the Lake District. Um, we've got some vinegar, rosemary, thyme, a little bit of sugar and some salt and pepper. Now this is amazing with, get ready for this, I made these earlier. Oh, what nice. Is I'll post these on the Facebook page. So I've made these lovely little Hasselback potatoes. Can you see those? We can. And all I've done is taken a potato and cut loads of little slices into it. So it's opened up and roasted and it's just a really nice way of doing it. So I'm going to serve my blackberry and apple cumberland sausage with some Hasselback potatoes, skins on, plenty of sea salt, and I've got some fresh broccoli over there cooking away. What a beautiful seasonal British meal. You couldn't want for more. Now, if you want the recipes, scan the QR code at the bottom or go to the website. Go to masterclass.co and you will find all my recipes there.
Please, if you have any questions, or if you fancy giving this a go, take a little photo and tag us in on at, Master, um, at Masterclass UK, and we'll see what you make. But thank you very much for joining us. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I cannot wait to see you again next week.